Welcome to Three Questions with Pastor Carney. I'm Phil Kuhn, Pastor Carney here with us, Billy Brinkerhuff. Billy, hi. what's the questions for today? Well, we're going to tackle, or Pastor's going to tackle, or all three of us are going to tackle uh, the question that was sent in to us by Brent. Which, thank you, Brent, for sending in a question. And what I have done is I've taken his one question and broken it into three parts that I think uh, will make it fit our format. We all have questions, and Pastor Carney has answers. We all want to know what he thinks. There's important information to know. What are his thoughts? How did he get here? What's his favorite golf ball? It's time for Three Questions with Pastor Carney. Luther was once asked, won't the thought of loved ones in hell bother us in heaven? To which he supposedly replied, not in the least. Do you agree with that simple <laughs> statement, or do you want to expand on why he would say not in the least? No, uh, it doesn't. Gonna, it's not going to bother us at all. Okay. No, because once we're in heaven, we're in complete joy, mm -hmm. and there's no human emotion uh, there. It's a complete joy and happiness, and uh, it's. It, I know where he's going with the question. Um, so a part of me wants to say, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of sad that you know so and so is not in heaven with me. They're in hell. Um, but in actuality, it, and I'm not going to be bothered with it because I'm up in heaven. Um, it's just like the story I use or the illustration I use about witnessing. Uh, that as you're going, when the when world is over and Christ has come back and we're all going up to heaven, okay? We look across the airwaves and there's our best friend going south. And your best friend looks at you in the eye and says, but you never told me. And well, we know that there's no sadness type of thing, and that's not going to happen, but it's an illustration. And so, yes, on my human side, I want to say, man, it bothers me so much that, that ABC is now in hell. But in actuality, we're in heaven, and we're not going to be bothered by people in, in hell because there, there, there's a great chasm between heaven and hell, and it's not going to bother us in the least. So I agree with Luther. But— yeah. And also, uh, you you know, you say that chasm between heaven and hell. I, I see it the same way with heaven and earth, too. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's that guilt trip thing of don't do not do that because, yeah. you know, your grandmother up in heaven oh. is going to be looking down yeah. on you and go, ah, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. We'll have no time to worry about someone who's not in heaven. Yeah. Right. And the thing is, is we're not even probably going to have the memories of earth because no. earth is sin. And so I think about like, mm -hmm. okay, it gives me kind of weird feelings to think that when I go to heaven— I won't see Melissa as my wife, no, but she will be my sister to right. Christ, but it, she won't be my wife. She's my earthly wife. Yeah. And it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's hard for us to understand that. Mm -hmm. It's hard for me to imagine going to heaven. And I like to picture my grandparents going to heaven and great grandparents mm -hmm. and, oh, they get to see each other again. They do, mm -hmm. but it's in a heavenly form, exactly. not necessarily an yeah. earthly, you're my wife, you're my yeah. husband. Yeah, you'll both be yeah. the bride of Christ and, right. you know, in family right. and union yeah. that way. So we'll, we'll, know, we'll know all Christians. That's right. right. Yeah. And we're not going to worry about those that, that aren't there. Right. They're just not worry about them. That's our worry now. That's our worry. Yeah, that's our worry. That's, and that's, that's a good yeah. point. That's a worry now. So yeah. we need to be out there with the spirit and with the word populating the zip code of heaven and depopulating the zip code of hell. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's why we worry about it now. Yeah, good point. Second part of the question, not second question, second part, second part. Uh, leads right into right after uh, Luther says, not in the least. Right. If heaven is a place where our capacity for compassion and knowledge has been increased, why would we not forever mourn those who suffer endlessly in hell? Because mourn uh, is a... a this dynamo that's coming out wrong, but it's it's a negative human emotion. And so there's pure joy and happiness 100% of the time. There's no room for mourning. Mourning comes from sin. Because if you remember, and you probably know this because yes. of your Bible study, mm -hmm. in the book of Revelation, there'll be no more mourning. Mm -hmm. Right. And so once we get to heaven, there is no mourning, as the Apostle John writes in mm -hmm. Revelation. Um, so there is no capacity to mourn yeah. in heaven. It, so, will it, we have a capacity to have compassion in heaven? Um Yes, but we will not call it compassion. It'll be brotherly, sisterly love. Okay. Yeah. What we call compassion down here will be a different kind of compassion in heaven. It's, you know, it's pure 
kindness 100% of the time uh, type of thing. But yeah, when, when, when John writes, there'd be no more crying, no more death, no, be, no more mourning. Right. So there's, there's no mourning in heaven. Yeah, a complete joy. And I think yeah. the closest that we get to mourning in heaven is in Revelation um, is when the angel gives John the scroll. Yes. And, says, and God says, you need to consume this, mm-hmm. eat it. Mm-hmm. And it tastes sweet, Mm -hmm. like honey in his mouth. But when he swallows it, it makes his stomach sour. And it's that knowledge, Mm -hmm. that that, that complete joy that Mm -hmm. that he understands that is going to happen in heaven. But with that knowledge, he also understands there's going to be those that Mm -hmm. turn away from it. And that turns his stomach. It's also a little, little bit of mourning from the angels, too, when they got the scroll and you hear the words, there's no one who can open the scroll. Yeah. And you almost hear the defeat yeah. in that voice. There's no one who open the scroll. No, wait yeah. a minute. There is somebody. Yeah, and, and then, John and then, cries. Right. And John right? cries. John cries. But John, yeah. again, is but not John's really on earth. there. He's That's right. on earth. John's on and earth. the elder turns to him and goes, come on. Come on. We got somebody. We can open yeah. this. We got <laughs> some right here. We're going to open it up. Um, but the, the short answer, uh, Brent, to your question and, and to those out there is that the Bible says there is no mourning in heaven. So, yeah. yeah. So we will, have, we will not have the capacity to mourn because there's no mourning in heaven. Third question, which follows third, third part right, of French question. right yep. after that, uh, to clarify mm-hmm. um, his would not, would we not forever mourn? He says, even if it were possible for someone to consciously choose such a fate, and I would assume choose such a fate would be to go to hell. Mm-hmm. Should this change our love towards them? Should it change our love for them? The answer is no. Um, Because here's why. Our love for them should be the same from point A to point Z, which is we, with the help of the Holy Spirit, need to again, to use, as I say, to populate the zip code of heaven and depopulate the zip code of hell. So our love for them should not change. Our love should be the same from point A to point Z is to find those with the help of the God, help of the God, help of God, to find those who do not yet believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior, to love them with a heartfelt love, to reach out to them and let the Spirit do the work. Preach the word, share your word, share your story, and let the Spirit do the convicting and convict their hearts, but just bring them the word. And uh, our love should never change, but that should be our main goal. You know what? There's also a lot of different meanings of what love is Mm -hmm. and how you can show love. Um, And I think sometimes we forget that, yeah, obviously our first thought of love is to mm-hmm. do nice things to yeah, show sure. empathy and all these but mm-hmm. there's there's also love yeah. that comes with accountability yeah. um yeah. it doesn't mean you disown that yeah. person but sometimes yeah. love comes in the form of accountability yeah and we don't love somebody be, because of a situation you know it's like saying that uh, yeah you feel cool whatever else and then all of a sudden you fall and you hurt your knee and then I go, oh, oh, I should say, oh, before you fall and hurt your knee. So don't let the incident of someone going to hell, somebody say, oh, maybe I should start loving them. Yeah. God says, love them regardless. Yeah. And so I would say, no, uh, don't change your love because your love should be love from day one yeah, and with I think that what person. The point that Phil brought up is very, very important and also a failing of the English language. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. We've been going through this with the youth group, um, the Greek words for love, mm-hmm. uh, and there's lots of them. And mm-hmm. other languages have lots of them. We only have one. Mm-hmm. And it kind of gets muddled mm-hmm. what you mean. Mm-hmm. Um, and this, I think, love that we need to focus on uh, from Jesus is agape, mm-hmm. you know, that unconditional, yeah. true, mm-hmm. driving mm-hmm. desire to have people with us mm-hmm. forever. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's... And it shouldn't change because of the situation. It should always right. be there. You know, love your neighbor as yourself. Mm-hmm. If I'm turning away, I would hope someone would, you know, Phil, yeah. pastor, mm-hmm. someone yeah. come after me it's and like, say, hey, hey, you know... You call the love. Yeah. You know? But they did. Doesn't make a difference what they did. You call the love. Yeah, it's difficult. I mean, because we're simply human people. But you know, God says love all the time. Right. You know, and we're going. Jesus, do you mean when this happens? Yes, when that happens. So yeah. So my love shouldn't change. It should always be the same. But I know as a simple human being, my love does change sometimes. But God says no, it shouldn't change. You should love your neighbor. 
I think I think it's also interesting how sometimes we do function out of fear mm-hmm. because I know for myself there's been times in my life where I go, ooh, mm-hmm. I don't want to go to hell. Mm-hmm. I should I should go away from this mm-hmm. lifestyle or I should mm-hmm. not be doing this or yeah. you know I need to repent. And then also when it comes to like my kids, my wife, siblings, parents, mm-hmm. the people that you love the most sometimes keeps me up at night thinking, mm-hmm. what if they didn't go to heaven? Right. Like, what if they ended up in hell? I mm-hmm. love them. Mm-hmm. Like, what? That would be literally the worst case scenario mm-hmm. is for them to end up in hell. Um, but again, that's earthly thoughts. Mm-hmm. Right. And th- yeah. that I had that exact question um, in the Revelation Bible study come up that if one of my loved ones doesn't go to heaven and if I get there and they're not there, I'm going to feel bad. Mm. Like, no, no, you're not. Yeah. It, it, that, that overwhelming presence of God mm-hmm. is going to just fill us with such joy that those aren't going to, aren't going to matter. But you should feel bad now, 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 now. Yes. Yeah. If, if I know someone in my life that I know is a non-believer, Now's the time to feel yeah. bad. Now's the time to reach out to them with a Christ-like love and say, hey, there's a better way, mm-hmm. that type of thing. So, yeah, feel bad, but now. Now, yeah. 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 Uh, Brent, awesome question. Awesome question, Brent. Uh, you're the best. And um, I would love, I don't know if it's going to happen soon, but I would love to attend a Bible study with Brent leading it. That would be awesome. <laughs> but uh, That so would, that so would so be I'm, deep. I'm yeah. putting the challenge out there, Brent. Yeah. I want to attend a Bible study that, that you lead. So it's, it's good. Challenge. I've, I've, I've been, been involved. Part, yeah. in oh, have you really? Yeah, he did. yeah I've been yeah. involved Before in those. You were really? Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Damn. So Brent, that's my challenge, buddy. Thanks, Pastor. It's been three questions with Pastor Carney. You guys have a great week. God bless you. Thanks again for joining us. If you have any questions about Redeemer, have a topic or interview suggestion, or need to know anything about the church, you can contact the church office at churchoffice at RedeemerWorsaw.org, Pastor Carney at Pastor underscore Carney at RedeemerWorsaw.org, Phil at Phil.Prevail at gmail.com, or Billy at RLC underscore IT at RedeemerWorsaw.org. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And please join us again next week. And until then, may the Lord be with your spirit and grace be with you.